Noah and Jay, you guys are here to talk about communication. And we talked a little bit about communication yesterday with some other folks on the line. So um, I'm going to let you guys take it away. Jay, I think you've got some questions for Noah. And welcome both to day two of the Digital Pivot. Yeah, thanks, Kit. Thanks, Taylor. I'm going to miss those bananas, though, as we're talking, Noah. So uh, no fans. Yeah, I'm going to cut my video for a second. <laughs> I, I, I wish I had, like, real banana right here because yeah. that would have, have been good timing. <laughs> well, the theme of my background today is going to be fresh foods I wish I had right now. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were channeling how you felt yesterday when Zoom kept blowing up on you, that you just felt like you'd gone bananas. Well, it's, it's actually, it was a little bit of that, too. It's twofold. <laughs> well, I find it very appealing. There we go. That's the dad joke. <laughs> Zing. Keeping it light. Keeping yeah, it light. I'm, I'm in Central Park. I can't do that. <laughs> it's not allowed today. Not with a mask <laughs> off, anyway. $1,000 fine. That's what I read just a few minutes ago. I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, but we don't have to wear masks here, so... Um, hey, uh, thank you for taking time to chat, Noah. I know you are, ha, have a firm stop at 12.25, so we can jump right in. Uh, I, have, I have a little bit longer than that, but yeah, I do, I do have to jump to another important conversation uh, with the, uh, other nonprofit leaders, but I'm thankful to be here, and it's incredible to see how so many people have come together to make this a reality today. So I first and foremost want to thank everybody for investing the time. It's an it's incredible conversation that's been going on. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome um, what everybody's put together and, um, and it's, it's a good excuse to be able to hear from folks like you and get some perspective on how we can come out the other end of all this crazy stuff and uh, be a lot more productive and focused on the right things. I mean, this is really an opportunity to come out of that kind of hot wheels accelerator <laughs> doing the right stuff. Um, and that's, that's apropos what we're supposed to be talking about today, which is pushing the easy button and if people don't know what that is, uh, you may have seen it in commercials in the past. It's to obviously make things easy or bring value uh, through improved communication experiences. And we're going to have a couple sessions on this and you're kicking us off with it. But before we even go there, could you, uh, for those who don't know you or your work, can you give us kind of a brief window on who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I'm Noah Barnett, as uh, Taylor already introduced, and I work for an organization called Virtuous Software. Uh, we really are positioned as growing nonprofits, CRM, and marketing automation tools, and help really streamline your operations and drive efficiency, while also helping you build lasting relationships with your donors. But prior to that, I actually spent uh, almost eight years working alongside nonprofits in various fundraising roles, and helping them grow their funding streams, and then spent some time in the digital fundraising space peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, et cetera. So have been spending, I, I was thinking about this morning, almost, uh, I think, 11 years now in and around the nonprofit uh, ecosystem. So yeah, no, it's been an incredible journey and just truly like a passion. My background's in marketing and I always knew I wanted to apply that to doing something good. I was like, if Apple can get people to wait out in line for six hours using marketing, like why can't we leverage that same skill set to solve uh -huh. some of the world's greatest challenges? Okay, I'm going to hold on to that image because the idea that people are waiting in line to support something that they really believe in, that's, boy, that would be a great ambition as we head out of this, this couple of days conference. Yeah, hey, we're seeing it right now, though. Like, I've seen so many people come together right now in this moment. And someone said on LinkedIn the other day that, like, in the midst of crisis, it's not a time where generosity, uh, like, falls away, but it's a time where people can now be more generous. Um, and I think we're seeing that show up in many different ways, especially for the organizations and those serving on the front lines of this crisis. Um, well, yeah, and, it's, been, it's been awesome. And bringing those two ideas together, um, I guess people don't show up and stand in line for Apple uh, or, and they don't necessarily display all that generosity. Just, you know, it's not, it's, I don't think it's about altruism. Do you? I mean, it's, we have to communicate something. So yeah, absolutely. What are the chief things that we need that are the chief elements of good communication? How do we get people to stand in that line to do good? Yeah. And it's a super important question because communication is really your nonprofit's tool to earn and like steward attention, which I believe is today's most valuable currency, especially in a world where donors are distracted and competition is fierce. Attention is truly the most valuable currency today. And I don't think that's just in our current moment, but as we go through 2020 and beyond, it's something to really keep in mind. And I think what's interesting is 
Um, Steven Screen at Better Fundraising put it this way, you know, a charitable donation is very different from a purchase. With a purchase, we receive a service or a product, and then we can evaluate if a good deal and if we want to buy it again. With a donation, you only get an organization's communications in response to your gift and maybe like a little hit of dopamine, but that's it. So effective communication is really your product in some ways that you're delivering back to your donor. And so it's so essential. And I think one of the things that we've done here in our research at Virtuous and just throughout the, my time working alongside nonprofits that are you know, doing everything from you know, animal advocacy to child development work internationally, there's kind of some key principles, I guess, of what is effective communication. Like how do you actually deliver your message through that vehicle, which is the only vehicle we have to really connect and engage with our supporters and close the loop. And so I'd love to share those with you um, and the audience today because it's something that I keep going back to. And it's kind of these five principles of effective communication. And the first is your communication has to be clear. You know, it, that's, that's essential. Like it has to be clear and communicated. I think a lot of that uh, depends on the type of industry you're in or the tone and kind of the voice of your organization. But at the end of the day, it should be clear. It shouldn't be confusing. It shouldn't be overcomplicated. It needs to be clear and concise. The second thing I think is really important, and not just now, but in any time, but more now than ever, is just to be transparent through your communication. You know, someone said the greatest advertisements, uh, I think it was uh, Ogilvy said, the best advertisements have to be true. Like it can't be a lie. Like it can't be something that just doesn't make sense. And so when you're communicating, you have to be communicating truth, which requires you to communicate in a transparent way uh, and being able to kind of just share what's going on and meeting people where they are. Uh, the third thing that gets into a little bit more of how you can really connect and, and, and really earn that attention of those that you're communicating with is this idea of relevancy. Um, it's something that I think now is really important because right now, you know, we're going through a variety of different impacts on kind of the current crisis moment, but how is your organization communicating in a relevant way? That's going to help you have effective communication. And then the last thing is, is it's personal. I think, you know, there's so much impersonal communication where it's brand talking to, you know, mass that that's not effective. You really need to communicate in a personal way. And what we found is that trust in institutions continues to decrease and dwindle away. And so even more so, we need to go back to the roots or the foundations of effective fundraising and just the like doing good in the world where it's people coming together to make a change in our world and our communication to be effective needs to leverage that posture when we're communicating with our supporters. And I think this is, this is kind of the last point, which I think to be truly personal, it requires you to first listen which I think is something that we could all do better at in our communications is how do we start with listening? I could not agree with you more. Um, and I guess we can also show that we're listening, which gets into this issue about responsive fundraising. Mm -hmm. And um, can you talk a bit about how you define that and why it's so important? Yeah. You know, in, it's, what is responsive fundraising? It's something that we've designed to really help kind of create an umbrella for how you build effective relationships with your donors. Mm -hmm. And if, if people are thinking like responsive fundraising, what does that mean? You know, in simple terms, it's really treating all donors like we treat our major donors. And, and here's what I mean by that. You know, first and foremost, responsive fundraising starts with this idea of listening. And what we say here at Virtuous is that you should be listening for donor signals. And so this is a slightly repurposed way of thinking about segmentation. So segmentation is an outcome, but the signals are the input. And so when you're listening, you're listening for these signals. And signals can be everything from the involvement a donor has with your organization or an individual. It could be the interest they have, whether they're interested in your emergency response programs or your community development programs, or they're interested in volunteering versus um, being a board member and providing kind of business acumen to your organization. That's an interest signal. And then the third is the intent. Like why does an individual actually support your organization? And these signals can kind of be combined together to be able to then begin to bridge a relationship with that individual. And so responsive fundraising starts with listening for donor signals that moves to this idea of you really want to connect personally 
with your supporters. And this goes back to relevancy. Like how do you connect with the right person at the right time with the right message um, through the right medium? And to be truly responsive, you have to move away from kind of fixed communication plans to more of dynamic communication plans. And that requires you to think about a donor's journey and identify the milestones on that. So the most obvious one is, you know, when a new donor comes in, how are you communicating with that? What signals have they sent you? One, they just gave to you. And then how can you connect personally with them? And that leads to the last stage of responsive fundraising or the responsive fundraising cycle is that you want to suggest the next right thing to that supporter. So if I know they just gave, I want to connect with them personally based on those signals. And then I want to suggest what's the next right thing for them. And that might be to maybe share your story. It might be to tell you why they gave to your organization. It doesn't always have to be a financial ask, but a lot of times it is. And even then it should be contextualized to that supporter based on those signals that you're, and again, and then the cycle repeats. So it's less about kind of pipeline or donor mountains or pyramids, <laughs> and rather this continuous cycle of how you're building a relationship. And that's exactly what, you know, like Taylor and Jay, I know, you know, we've just recently met, like we're building a relationship and it's kind of the same cycle and ultimately, it's kind of based on relationship science, which is responsiveness builds connection. Connection is required to build relationships. Um, there's a, I mentioned him yesterday, I mentioned him again today because he passed not, not too long ago and he taught many of us. And that's Jerry Panis always talked about listening to gift. So mm. he was working in very much an analog uh, way, not just an analog era, but <laughs> he thought that <laughs> way. Uh, it was very much about writing those handwritten notes. But, um, it, but it gets to the heart of what you were talking about in both those sections where you gave us the five elements of great communication uh, and then you talked about the elements of responsive fundraising in that they both start in, well, at least fundamental to both is this idea about listening and demonstrating mm -hmm. that we've listened and then tailoring the next set of actions according to both what we've learned and what people are expressing. And, uh, and, that, and so if we're talking about pivoting during the whole conference, it sounds like uh, it's not, we're, at, we're not asking people to be different people. We're asking them to be better versions themselves, more authentic versions, <laughs> and then use these, these uh, approaches to uh, also uh, um, bringing in the tech that's going to let us do this more effectively, not just more efficiently, but more effectively and more authentically. And that gets into this issue about tech support for our sector. So right now, a lot of people will be struggling with not just uh, – my gosh, can I send a solicitation because I'm worried people are out of work? That's something we're going to have to keep talking about, I guess. But also, um, how can we use the tools at our disposal to uh, have this kind of conversation you're talking about, to highlight the rest, best messages, the most authentic, real, and effective messages, but also mm -hmm. make it about the other person, and make it about them. And, and two parts to that. How do we best use tech now and in the coming uh, months, but also what should we not do? Yeah, no, 100%. And it's almost easier to frame the question of like, what can technology not do to start? And I think technology cannot replace the activity that you have or the personal interaction that you have. But what it can do is remove and free up time and white space to allow you to do what humans can only do, which is to uh, empathize and connect in a personal way and look someone else in the eye and like feel emotionally and like have compassion with that individual. Like those are things technology can't do. However, there's a lot of commentary where it's like technology can't help build relationships. Technology can't help do this. Automation is not a way to build a relationship. And what we see here at Virtuous is that technology is a tool that modern organizations like all the organizations you and I have probably interacted with today from brands are leveraging technology, whether it was the Peloton app that PS is free for the next three months, so you should use it, um, is recommending what the best exercise was for me this morning. They're connecting with me in a personal way that makes me feel like they know and they're listening. They're using this idea of responsiveness to connect with me in a personal way. But technology is helping to facilitate that relationship. Um, and help you actually build stronger relationships at scale. And so at Virtuous, what we see is that technology can actually come alongside you and help you with all three phases of the responsive fundraising cycle. First and foremost is listening. You know, we have the capacity to ask questions. We have the capacity to get information, but we can't maintain and retain that in our heads. You have to have a place 
that's collecting all of that information, especially when you grow, you need a central source of truth. And technology can enable you to do that. The other thing technology can do is actually listen for things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to capture. This could be website data. This could be engagement data with your emails. This could be other you know, wealth indicators or social insights that you can pull in to begin to craft a holistic visual of your supporter, which is going to enable you and your organization to connect in a personal way. And the second phase is connecting personally. You know, major donors get phone calls and we can only scale that to maybe 150 donors per rep. But technology can actually enable you to automate various stages of that so that you can combine with technology to build a relationship with all your donors. We go back to that responsive fundraising is about building, treating all donors like major donors. And technology, especially marketing automation and other communication tools, can help facilitate that relationship. So that when someone trips the wire and is giving you a thousand dollars lifetime, technology can say, "Hey, we're gonna. Re- you should send a personal note to them." And that's not something you wouldn't want to do, but technology is enabling you to do that at scale and still keep it personal. And the last phase of technology is making contextualized suggestions. And so technology has the ability to say. I know that this is Taylor, I know this is Jay, and when we send communication, we are gonna recommend the next right step for Jay, not segment A versus segment B, but for Jay. And that is extremely difficult to do without leveraging technology. And now you can actually do this not only in a digital environment, but through all channels. And our big thing at Virtuous is we wanna empower organizations to have one conversation with a donor through multiple channels. And that's only possible by tapping into technology to be a support for that connectivity. Yeah. Uh, and now I know you're gonna have to run to the next thing. And there may be <laughs> comments or questions that people have and, and we'll probably have to handle much of that offline. So I apologize for that, but, um, but it was great to hear you go through all that. But if, if, uh, if people want one takeaway, one way that they're going to go from, let's say, a more traditional kind of direct mail environment, but now they find themselves uh, staring at their screens like you and I are doing right now, uh, and they're trying to figure out how to make that switch to digital or how to make that better. If they would just have one or two takeaways, what would they be right now for you? Yeah, I think the first thing is to listen. Like we all have more data and more value. I know T. Clay Buck is a part of this conversation as well. And he always talks about this is that like sometimes we're always looking externally and begging that we had more, more donors, more data, more information, more privilege, more attention in our inboxes. And what we discount is what we already have. And that could be the donors that have supported us forever. That could be the historical data of those that have Uh, impacted and connected with our organization in different ways is actually how do we take that listening skill and go back to where we have? Because I think right now, more than ever, we need to double down on the engagements and the relationships that we've already been building. I know Barbara Clay and I um, um, had this conversation where it's like, we have more than we think we have. And so I'd highly encourage organizations to not necessarily focus on what more or what we don't have, but taking a true look at it an inventory and saying, what do we have? And let's write that list instead of the ones that we don't have. The second thing, if I, if I could um, add to this, is that communication in today's digital world doesn't have to be distant. I was on a panel two weeks ago, and someone said, the, fun, the, the worst thing we did as a society when we went into this crisis is use the wrong words. And I was like, well, what do you mean by that? And she's like, we called it social distancing when really we're just physically distanced. We're not socially distant. And I think we need to remember that, that we have an opportunity to still build personal relationships like we're doing right now on this call, even in a digital world amidst quarantine. And I think this is going to continue. And leveraging these tools has been a great crash course on how we can still stay socially connected in a physically distant world. And that's still something that you can do today. So those are my two kind of primary things. And, and yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely the two recommendations I would give. That's wonderful. And better than all that is choosing our words, not overly cautiously, but empathetically, sensitively, mm-hmm. and uh, intentionally. And you've just done all that with everything you just described. Thank you so much. Yeah. Really yeah. And if I could, I would love to, I had this quote written down because I wanted to share it because I always want to go back to it. Oh. And I feel like it's super relevant to this conversation. And I always love to end with this quote by the founder of Save the Children, as I believe it really 
sums up this conversation and honestly, our role as fundraisers um, nicely. Uh, and it says, you know, we have to devise a means of making known the facts. It's our job to make it, devise a means of making known the facts in such a way as to touch the imagination of the world. The world is not ungenerous, but unimaginative and very busy. And I feel like as, a, as an organization, as you're thinking about even this current moment, keep this at the heart of what you're trying to do as you communicate, because this is our job. This is our task. And how can we spark the imagination of the world to really engage in the cause that we deeply care about? So. It's a wonderful quote from a very profound person. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for all this. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Jay. And Taylor, thanks for coordinating all of this. And thanks, everyone, for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. I know there were a couple questions about your five points and stuff. So I'll get with you to do like a recap thing that we can post up, um, something like that for people. Thank you. Yeah. I yeah, if helpful, I do have a few minutes. I know we're already behind on the uh, like where the scheduled was, but Taylor, I have a few minutes if there are questions and we have time for them. Yeah, real real quick, um, and I was kind of bumping in and out, but just real quick, could you repeat briefly for us the list of the five qualities that you ran through? Just do you oh, have yeah. those real quick, and, and I can type them into the chat. Yeah, I can copy and paste them. I have my notes as well, so I can do that. Awesome. Um, so That's effective great. communication is clear, which means concise. It's also transparent. It's relevant. It's true. And it's personal. And all of these requires you to start with listening. Awesome. I like that you said it requires to start with listening. I couldn't agree more. By the way, Jay, I got avocados now. <laughs> <laughs> while you were talking, while you guys were talking, I got new fruit, new food. Wait, because it's, it's technically a fruit because it does have a big seed. Yeah, it's technically a fruit. I love a good avocado. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't? Anyways. Yeah. I know, seriously. Just well, sure thank you all again. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Noah. Thanks, it was a pleasure having you, you here as I appreciate always. appreciate it.